Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Andy on Crime. In today's video I'm going to be looking at why the charges were dropped against Premier League footballer Mason Greenwood. I hope you find the video useful. Now this case came about in January 2022 when an individual posted images alleging injury was caused to them as well as an audio clip purporting to be of Mason Greenwood, the Manchester United footballer, which alleges that he engaged in non-consensual sexual behaviour. This audio clip as well as the images understandably caused a backlash across social media leading to him being suspended by Manchester United. The police investigated and several months after, in October of 2022, Mason Greenwood was charged with three offences. The first charge was one of attempted rape. The second charge was one of controlling and coercive behaviour. And the third charge was one count of assault occasioning actual bodily harm. On the 2nd of February 2023, prior to standing trial, the Crime Prosecution Service announced that it was discontinuing the case against Mason Greenwood, meaning the charges would be dropped. So in this video, I'm going to look at firstly how prosecutors come to the decision to charge an individual with a criminal offence, and then to look specifically at this case to explain the reasons why the Crown Prosecution Service decided to discontinue the case. When a prosecutor is considering whether or not to bring a charge against a defendant, they must apply what is known as the Code for Crown Prosecutors. And this is an open source document available on the Crown Prosecution Service website. In this case, the prosecutor in the case would have applied what is known as the full code test. And this is a test made up of two subtests the first being the evidential test. And as the name suggests, this is where the prosecutor considers all the evidence that's been provided to them by the police in determining whether or not to bring a charge. When applying the evidential test, they're looking at whether or not there is a sufficient prospect or sufficient evidence to provide a realistic prospect of conviction against a suspect on any individual charge. And they look at not only the evidence that's been provided by the police, but they also consider what any defence might be and how that may affect the prospect of conviction. And what they're ultimately looking to answer is whether or not an objective, impartial or reasonable jury, bench of magistrates or judge, hearing the case alone, once properly directed and acting in accordance with the law, would it be more likely than not that they would convict the defendant of the charge or charges alleged? And if the answer to that question is yes, then it passes the evidential test. It's important to note that what they're not considering at this stage is whether or not a jury, magistrates or bench would be sure. That's the criminal standard of proof, but that's not what is being considered at this stage. The second test that's applied is what's known as the public interest test. And that's really considering whether or not a prosecution is in the public interest. And there can be a number of reasons why this wouldn't be the case. Maybe the age of the defendant, maybe the out of court disposals that are available are a more appropriate way to deal with the situation. But the default position is that a prosecution will normally take place unless there are overriding public interest factors which tend to outweigh those in favour of a prosecution. And we saw an example of this with uh, Prince Philip who was involved in a car accident which he could potentially have been prosecuted for. Ultimately he gave up his licence which would have been the likely punishment in any event and therefore it was deemed not in the public interest to prosecute him. But in the case of Mason Greenwood, it was uh, determined that both the evidential test and the public interest test was satisfied. Therefore, the full code test was satisfied and three charges, which I mentioned earlier, were brought against him. So what changed and why was the case discontinued? Once a prosecutor has determined that the full code test has been met, they remain under an obligation to continually review the case when new evidence or circumstances change which might affect the full code test. It's not simply a case of them reviewing the evidence at the time of arrest 
making a charging decision and then waiting until trial. A prosecutor must keep an open mind and consider new evidence or new circumstances which may affect their original decision. And what happened in the case of Mason Greenwood, and this is based on the small statement that was provided by the Crown Prosecution Service, but there was a change of circumstances. They outlined that key witnesses had withdrawn from the case and that new evidence had come to light, which meant that the evidential stage of the full code test was no longer satisfied. Simply put, as I outlined before, it was no longer more likely than not that a jury judge or magistrate properly directed and acting in accordance with the law would convict the defendant of the charges alleged. And as that test is no longer satisfied, a prosecutor is under a duty to discontinue the case on that basis. In terms of what might happen next, well firstly Mason Greenwood is no longer subject to any criminal investigation and nor is he subject to any bail conditions or any other conditions that were previously imposed by the court. He's not however been acquitted of an offence, the case never proceeded to trial and no verdict was given by a jury. So if new evidence comes to light, whether key witnesses re-engage with the process or there are other pieces of evidence that come forward, the Crown Prosecution Service may review the case to determine whether or not the full code test is met. And then if it is, they may bring any new charges which are deemed appropriate. But at present, however, it seems unlikely given the withdrawal of what appear to be key witnesses that a prosecution will be brought forward in this case. So to summarise this case, the Crown Prosecution Service applied the full code tests originally and determined that it was met and brought three charges against Mason Greenwood. However, under their duty to continually review the case, it was determined due to the withdrawal of key witnesses and new evidence coming to light that the full code test was no longer satisfied and they therefore discontinued the case against Mason Greenwood. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video informative. If you do have any comments, please post them down below. If you did enjoy this, then consider giving this a like. And if you'd like to see more, consider subscribing to my channel where I do criminal shorts on a daily basis talking about criminal law. And I'm also aiming to do more review videos like this. Thanks for watching. Take care.